Elden Ring has been taking massive strides in popularity since its release on February 25th this year. It has broken many concurrent player counts, including that of Steam. According to SteamDB, the action RPG attained a peak of 953,426 concurrent players on Steam alone. This is a monumental achievement considering that previous releases have had player counts nowhere near this number. Dark Souls Remastered peaked at a mere 24,500 players four years ago. The third installment, Dark Souls 3, reached the peak of 129,975 players, while Sekiro was somewhat comparable and attained 125,315 concurrent players. This has placed the title as the sixth game with the highest concurrent player count. By comparison, earlier this month Lost Ark was also able to enter the Steam's top 10 and achieved a 1.3 million player count. Also above Elden Ring are CSGO, Dota 2, Cyberpunk 2077 and PUBG. Forspoken, one of Square Enix's upcoming games, has had its release date moved from May to October 2022. The open world action RPG is a debut game by Luminous Productions. The official Twitter account for Forspoken announced on March 7th that they have decided to move the release date of their upcoming game. Originally, Forspoken was set to be released in May, but has been pushed back to October 11th, 2022. For those who are unaware, Forspoken is a debut game by Luminous Productions, a subsidiary of Square Enix. This company revealed that it was working on a title back in June of 2022, which was revealed as Project Athea, which was the working title. Later, it was officially named Forspoken. Forspoken follows the footsteps of Frey Holland, a disgruntled New Yorker who is unhappy with her life. She is then mysteriously teleported from her home into the land of Athea. We also got a new trailer this week during this PlayStation State of Play, which featured Frey surfing on water, wielding some powerful abilities, and more of the heroine facing off against dragons and traversing the dangerous open world. The developers at Massive Work Studio have been working on a sci-fi action RPG they are calling Dolmen. The game follows in the steps of games such as Dark Souls and The Surge in the sense that the combat is slower and methodical, patience and learning enemy tactics is paramount to victory. This week, listings for the game's release started popping up on different platforms. It was later confirmed that the title would be releasing on March 20th for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. Dolmen is set in a mining station on an ancient planet called Revian Prime. An interdimensional rift opens up and it is overrun by hideous creatures. Players will face a number of space horrors as they are tasked with retrieving crystals with unique properties. Players will have access to both melee and ranged combat options. You can make use of your basic rifles, axes, swords, but you'll also have the options of futuristic weapons such as energy blades, chainsaws, and organic weapons. Dolmen is set to release on May 20th for consoles and PC. Good news, Monster Hunters! Capcom has announced an upcoming digital event for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak to go into detail of what the expansion will entail. The expansion, which is set to release in summer this year, has already had a few details revealed, including monsters Malzino, Lunagaran, and Shogun Senator. However, Capcom tees even more monsters will be unveiled during the event, which will be around 20 minutes in length. Expect gameplay info and much more. You can catch the live stream on the official Monster Hunter channel on Twitch on March 15th at 7am PDT. Hopefully this will give us a closer look into what the expansion will bring and maybe the release date. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak is coming to both Switch and PC in summer 2022. Lost Ark developer Smilegate RPG and publisher Amazon Games announced the free-to-play MMO action RPG has made a huge milestone. The title has passed the 20 million player mark across regions North America, Europe and South America. Just this week, Lost Ark introduced new content including a new Guardian raid featuring Argus and more storyline featuring Kadan. Further content was announced which includes the Akeja Grand Prix, where players who have reached level 50 get transformed and will compete in teams of 7 to cross the finish line. This 7 vs 7 time limited event is available until the April update. The competitive Proving Ground Season 1 is also on its way, which will be happening later this month. Players can join Team Deathmatch mode to take part in Season 1 to move up the ranks in Proving Grounds in hopes of rewards and glory. There are also new login bonuses to gain with lots of useful materials for honing, rapport, card packs and more. Don't miss out on the new Twitch Prime loot which includes a new Egg Pet, Crystalline Aura and Amethyst Shards. The turn-based RPG King Arthur Knight's Tale has been announced to be postponed from its March release date, now releasing on April 26th. 
The tactical RPG has been in Early Access for a while and will be leaving Early Access next month. The gameplay is split between exploring large areas, turn-based tactical combat and city management. Each hero you recruit will have one of the six distinct classes. Available at launch will be the Defender, Champion, Marksman, Vanguard, Arcanist and Sage. Depending on what class a character is will determine what kind of spells, weapons and armor they will make use of. Sony's PlayStation State of Play took place this week with lots of updates and a couple of announcements in terms of RPGs. The State of Play was packed with titles quite a few already released and some releasing this month such as Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see more of Final Fantasy XVI, but hopefully these new titles will keep us going until more news is shared. First revealed was the Dio Field Chronicle, a strategy RPG from Square Enix, which has a familiar art style not too dissimilar to the likes of Octopath Traveler and the newly released Triangle Strategy. However, Dio Field Chronicle looks to focus on the war between the Trophilet Chauvian Empire and the Rotale Alliance and is a fully 3D experience. The second RPG to be unveiled at this state of play was Valkyrie Elysium returning to the world of Valkyrie Profile. This fantasy title previewed some of the action gameplay which showed hack and slash combat. According to the PlayStation blog, the action RPG takes place at the end times of Ragnarok, with the last hope relying on a lone Valkyrie entrusted with the last strength of the Old Father. The title will include classic Valkyrie series elements such as the Ahenyar warriors that can be recruited to fight alongside in battle, as well as special attack and combo systems. Both the Diofield Chronicle and Valkyrie Elysium are set to be released in 2022 for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. As for what else was shown at the state of play, we got more Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin which came with the announcement that a new demo is now available. You can download the new demo with progress carrying over to the full game. If you want more details about the Sony state of play and what was announced, be sure to check out the Factual Life website and as with all news that's covered in this video, you can find all the articles there as well. The open world survival RPG Outward is coming to consoles and PC as a definitive edition. This edition contains the base game and two DLCs, Three Brothers and the Sauroborians, plus new content and improved quality of life updates and balancing adjustments. It also marks the end of Outward being the last update in terms of content. In case you missed it, Outward released in 2019 developed by Nine Dot Studios featuring an open world where as a traveller you face terrible perils. Death is not the end, but it can leave you in a tougher spot than where you began. It also features split-screen co-op, survival mechanics, combat, and spellcasting. The Outward Definitive Edition not only comes with a base game and two DLCs, but also new content such as new encounters in dungeons, new scenarios, and new diseases. Quality of life features such as being able to access your stash even when adventuring in a friend's world has also been added. Good news for those who already own the base game and both the downloadable content as they will receive the definitive edition upgrade for free. Well that's it for the week in the wikis, please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits and budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community. Keep checking in with us with news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids, and general wiki goodness.